Welcome back to part three of Health Policy and Delivery Systems. This is part three of the video lecture on Health Policy and Delivery Systems. This is the last part of the three video lectures. Measuring the nation's health. As mentioned earlier, Health United States is a report that is compiled annually to inform policymakers of trends in the nation's health. You have several graphics in your chapter to demonstrate the kinds of information that are collected and displayed for policymakers and the public to understand the nation's health. Healthy People 2020 and now Healthy People 2030 are 10 year agendas for improving the nation's health. The goal again is to increase the quality and years of healthy life and eliminate health disparities. And again, the Central Intelligence Agency collects statistics and publishes morbidity data, also comparing the United States to other countries. What trends exist in the US include successes in an infectious, infection disease campaign, as well as other diseases. However, there continue to be concerns about sedentary lifestyle, obesity, and chronic illness. Health disparities continue to persist and contribute to unfavorable US health indicators. They also comprise part of the progress of the World Health Organization's measures. Vulnerable populations due to age, education, language, and location continue to exist as along with a rise in suicide and drug poisoning deaths, especially those involving opioid analgesics. Nurses have a long tradition of health promotion. The nursing pioneers include Florence Nightingale in the Crimean War in 1884, who crusaded for nutritious food, cleanliness, and sanitation. Lillian Wald of the Henry Street Settlement in New York City in 1883 founded the New York City Visiting Nurses Association to provide health services for indigent people living in tenements. Through the ensuing decades, nurses have continued to develop unique roles as change agents for health promotion. Seeking a safer system. The US healthcare system continues to undergo changes. Many of these are sparked by healthcare reform politics. Large organizations are also involved in forming health policy and lobbying for such. Health and Medicine Division, previously known as the Institute of Medicine, IOM, this agency is now known as the National Academy of Medicine, a nonprofit, non governmental agency which is part of the National Academy of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. They conduct research from a systems approach and provide advisement on safe delivery of healthcare. The healthcare system, not practitioners, are the basic cause of medical errors, according to reports. So let's look at the public sector and power and influences. The sources of power are shared by federal and state levels. Federal in the form of taxing, spending, and general welfare. States in the form of health authority based on the 10th Amendment. The influence of political philosophy continues to bear its effects on the nation. Each new administration since the 1980s has introduced new philosophical bent bills or components of health care. The most recent legislation, HIPAA in 1996, Medicare Prescription Drug Act of 2003, the Affordable Care Act of 2010, and the Children's Health Insurance Program, otherwise known as CHIP, in 2015. As you know, we are engaged in an ongoing national health care debate. The image that you see here show the blue states having 
accepted Medicaid ex expansion and the orange states having declined. So let's look at the public sector, current and future policy. Current political issues regarding health care, lack of political consensus with partisan discord, major factors are cost, access, and quality, not surprisingly, and then discordant partisan views concerning the Affordable Care Act. The nurses' role in health care reform is a combined effort of the American Nurses Association, which advocates for a single-payer system, which may or may not be the best option, but focuses on primary care and prevention. The push for nurses to function to the full extent of their education and training, removing barriers is another critical component in healthcare reform that nurses need to advocate for. And finally, to understand that nurses comprise the largest segment of the healthcare workforce with 3 million members. Official healthcare agencies at the local level, we have the local health departments and direct services to the public are provided by many of those. At the state level, we have the state health department which is involved in policy planning and program coordination. And finally, at the federal level, run by executive and legislative branches within the government, which determines health policy and the US Health and Human Services Division administers policy. From a, an agency perspective, we have the chief nursing officer of the United States, which serves in the U.S. Public Health Service and works with the U.S. Surgeon General on nursing and public health policy, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, which is part of the Department of Homeland Security, is involved in disaster-related services and assists individuals, communities, and states. In the military health system, we have comprehensive medical care for active duty personnel, dependents, and retirees. They respond to natural disasters and humanitarian crises throughout the world. The Veterans Administration is an independent agency under the president to provide for better health and better health care. And finally, the Wounded Warriors Care, which provides services for our soldiers who have been wounded in war. Healthcare legislation and agencies include the Americans with Disabilities Act, which prohibits job discrimination and requires services for people with disabilities. The Patient Self-Determination Act, which is involved with advanced directives for healthcare. The Federal Health and Information Privacy, Legislation which safeguards the security and confidentiality of health information, HIPAA. The international level WHO, the World Health Organization, providing guidance regarding world health through standards, programming, and collaboration. And voluntary not-for-profit agencies, which also influence policy and legislation. And the American Red Cross which is a volunteer-led humanitarian organization, has a congressional charter officially sanctioned, but no direct government supervision, with 700 local chapters, 500,000 volunteers, and 35,000 employees. As you know, the American Red Cross responds to local disasters as well as large natural disasters. They also are responsible for blood products, health education, communication for servicemen and families. Let's turn our attention for a moment to the uninsured. Of all developed countries, the United States has the highest proportion without health insurance. As of 2008, 46 million uninsured persons younger than the age of 65 comprised the uninsured. Most uninsured individuals live in families in which there is at least one full-time worker. 
The groups that are at most risk include persons of Mexican origin, young adults, the working uninsured, and undocumented aliens. The, un excuse me, the Affordable Care Act was expected to reduce the number of uninsured. The Affordable Care Act and HIPAA. The Affordable Care Act was expected to reduce the number of uninsured people by 60%. This was with projections including the expansion of Medicaid, which included subsidies to pay health insurance premium, premiums and a federal mandate requiring citizens to enroll in an insurance pan, plan with penalties for noncompliance. The provisions allowing for children to remain with an employer family insurance plan up to age 26 has benefited many people, as has the mandate to eliminate pre-existing condition clauses as a condition of uh, obtaining insurance. So the Affordable Care Act has really improved access to care. And then the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA, includes provisions for maintaining coverage if a job is lost or a person leaves their job. Undocumented immigrants. 11.3 million undocumented aliens in the United States as of 2014. 50% of these are from Mexico. Some illegal entry, but others actually overstay visas. Federal law mandates that anyone entering an emergency room must be treated regardless of the ability to pay. So you can see that some people have no way to access health care until they're desperately ill and need emergency room services. Undocumented, quote, illegal, which is, unquote, uh, aliens, I don't think anybody can, by virtue of being a human, be illegal but they are considered a vulnerable population. The indigent but not eligible for Medicare or Medicaid population includes these people, and many do not seek care for fear of deportation. Immigration re reform remains a highly contentious issue. So healthcare in other countries. Um, in the Canadian healthcare system, there is universal coverage social insurance plan. There are private plans which are available for unpaid services if people want to purchase those. The issue is this creates a two-tiered system and also Canada suffers from a provider shortage which results in delays in service. As you can see how many days people are still waiting in Ontario for example uh, one of the Canadian provinces. It's a long wait for many types of care. Healthcare in other countries, in Germany, the healthcare system is nearly universal access, 87%, but private insurance covers about 10% and pays providers better. So once again, we have a two-tiered system and weakened public health system. This results in increased cost. Healthcare in other countries in the United Kingdom. Health, the United Kingdom healthcare system is a national health insurance, and among their many outcomes, they spend less on healthcare per capita than the U.S. The nurse's role in health policy. As we sum up this lecture series, we want to reinforce that nurses must act as advocates both individually and for justice in the healthcare system. They should be participating in policy decision making. We need to be at the table when these things are being discussed so that we can vote and we need to com communicate with our legislators, run for political office, participate in lobbying effort efforts through professional organizations and individual action.